Hey, you know what? We brought um, Todd Lewis here to talk to us. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, spotlight Todd. Well, hopefully I got that button right. I did. I'm going to add me to the spotlight just so you can uh, see the two of us. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a thing we rarely do here, but Todd's got this all things open thing coming up. They got such an awesome website, so I thought I would uh, try to share a picture of that website so people could see it as well. And um, if I've got this right. I think this is it. I uh, there might be a big thump. Todd Lewis, talk to us. I mean, about yeah, this man. all things open. This is an awesome event, you guys. This is not your first rodeo. When I say it's not your first rodeo, this is what your 10th event, your 13th event, your... Depends on how you're counting, right? All right. So All Things Open, uh, number nine, started yep. this in 2013. So we've been at this about nine years. And then uh, even before All Things Open, we were doing open source events, meetups and conferences and things like that for probably five years before that. So we've right. been at this, uh, you know, again, depending on how you counted, uh, a decade plus. Yeah. I mean, well, the thing is, I was thinking about all of those other events, and sometimes you run them a couple times a year because you run the All Things Open and you run others as well. So you've got, you've always had a lot of things going. You have spent a lot of time building this community. And the events that I've been to, of course, have been incredible. Uh, you know, and then we had this little lockdown thing, which really kind of caused a mess. And now you're back this year with a hybrid event. Talk to us about all things open. Talk to us about what hybrid event means, how you guys are going to execute it. Because I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't trust a lot of people to do this, but I trust you to do it because I know that you really care about the event experience. Yeah, I do. So let me, um, and I know some people may have already heard about this, but I'll, I know a lot of people have not. But uh, the reason, like I've been in tech about 20 years personally, maybe a little more than 20 years. Uh, go back about 15 years, um, you know, I knew a lot of people that were using open source. I was discovering Linux myself and learning what it was and things like that. But there really wasn't a lot of education on those topics. You know, if you go back 10 or 15 years, open source was still this odd, strange thing that, you know, only hobbyists really engaged in or used or contributed to. Um, it really, the general feeling was, you know, it couldn't really be used in a work environment, a work setting. There was no real application. Again, it was more for hobbyists. That was a prevailing opinion just a decade ago, really. So right. much has changed just in the last 10 years. So, you know, I was attempting to learn a lot about it, as much about it as I could, because I saw these trends. I saw more people using them, using the technology, and it, it just wasn't available. It wasn't available in college curriculums, college CS programs. It wasn't available in code schools. It wasn't, it, it just wasn't available. So I, we initially, you know, kind of kicked off the, the conference series and um, did our first one, wasn't quite sure what would happen. And it ended up being very successful. And I found out that there were a lot of other people out there that were also using open source and very much wanted to learn more about it. And they uh, came to the event, even our first event, which happened in Columbia, attracted people from Atlanta and Charlotte. And when people started coming in from those cities, we sort of knew we were onto something. I, you know, it was kind of the light bulb moment, like, wow, if someone's willing to catch a day flight here from Atlanta to come to an event, a first year event, right? Smaller in scope and scale, then there are other people out there, a lot of other people out there like us. So those, it's really progressed from there, but that's really the genesis. That's how this whole thing got started. And then uh, over the years, it's just grown and grown and grown to really where it is today. We host the All Things Open Conference, which is coming up in October. That's what you can see on your screen. And then we also host the Open Source 101 series. We do that a couple of times a year. And then we host meetups as well. We host multiple meetups uh, in Raleigh and the RTP and in Columbia. We have a meetup group called Open Source South Carolina. And really the goal is, is just to continue the educational opportunities and the networking opportunities around open source. We still find even though more education is available these days, you've got YouTube, YouTube has grown in scope. Uh, you know, and then uh, uh, there is at least a minimum or a minimal amount of education available in college programs, college CS programs. There's still not a lot, frankly, all these years later. So we continue to do what we do because one, we love it, but two, there's still the need there to educate uh, people and to provide networking opportunities within the space. So to the hybrid format, 
Phil, to your point, uh, or to your latter point there, um, COVID, you know, has changed things, right? Life is very, very different than it was 18 months ago for everyone. So uh, I can think of few other industries that have been more directly impacted by COVID than the in-person events business. Uh, it has been just, you know, a bomb <laughs> right in the middle of everything. Right. I don't know. I don't mean to make light of bombs, but uh, it, it, you know, uh, it has truly changed things in the events world. So um, last year's event was all virtual because there was no chance of meeting in person. But this year we are coming back in a hybrid format and we are going to uh, be on site in Raleigh in October. And then but we're also going to live stream all that content, all the in-person content to the virtual platform. So we are making it available in both formats, um, you know, in an attempt to accommodate everyone, i.e. those people that feel comfortable getting back to in person. And then those that don't, they're not quite ready yet, and they would prefer to consume content from their home or their office, basically from their machine. So uh, we think uh, that we've got this thing figured out. Uh, if there will be turbulence, we'll make mistakes, and I'm sure everybody that joins the event will see that. But I think um, you know we're working very hard to figure it out. It's not easy. It's extremely complex, honestly, sort of under the hood. Uh, but uh, again, we've been doing this for 15 years, 10 to 15 years. So like you said, I mean, uh, you know, if, 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 if anyone should be able to figure it out, it's probably us. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is too, I mean, and when we talk about figuring this out and what you've got going, as I'm rolling up on the screen, we're not talking about 10, 10 cats wrapped around a, a conference room table wearing pocket protectors. I mean, you've had some really significant events in terms of number of people, number of presenters, uh, amount of content. I mean, this is a cornucopia of stuff. Um, and I, it looks like this year you've got a, an incredible number of sessions, whether I'm attending it live or uh, online. Yeah, um, you know, that's when we came up with the name of this, we thought, you know, because you know, there are, are smaller tech events, uh, more niche that focus on maybe a silo or a particular area of interest, the, you know, all things open, um, you know, means, in my opinion, if, if I didn't know any better, and I read that, that it was most things or all things within the open source space. So we do take more of a uh, you know, kind of a macro approach to this. And, and we do cover a, a lot of topics. So yeah, last in-person event that we did in 2019, 5,000 people were on site in Raleigh from all over the world, from 42 states, I think in 27 countries. And that year we hosted about 250 sessions that were all on site. Uh, as a matter of fact, not all, we grew outgrew the convention center and we had to move over to the Marriott Hotel and take up all their conference space. Last year, we did about the same number of sessions, but it was all virtual. And this year, we are decreasing the amount of content just by a little bit to make it a little easier to coordinate because we are doing, in effect, two events. We are hosting right. and, and, and putting on an in-person event and a virtual event. So that is a lot more work, frankly. And because of that, we wanted to decrease the amount of content that we're offering. But even with the, you know decreasing the amount of content, still 150 sessions, 150 plus speakers, uh, eight keynotes over two days, and then we also have the inclusion and diversity event on Sunday, October the 17th. So it's still a lot of content. Yeah, no, it's a ton of content. You know, one of the things when we talked about and people were interested in this, I love the idea of connecting, whether I'm doing it online or doing it in person. Just what you learn from everyone else, that's amazing. The, the session leaders, of course, are amazing. But the opportunity, you know, we talked about opportunities for work in this space. I just think bumping into other people who are doing, doing cool stuff, it's a great opportunity to figure out if you're trying to get a gig in that space, not just who's hiring, but what's possible in this space. I mean, that's why I like hanging around this group of people. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I mean, jobs right now, you know, in tech, so many people are hiring, right? So, right. And, and just, the, you know, the nature of hiring has changed. And, and, and really, that's such a broad topic and such an interesting and deep topic. In my opinion, it's a topic for a standalone episode or podcast right. even. I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me. 
So, so many more companies are not now hiring remote workers. So, so many more people are looking for talent outside of their immediate geographical area, which has really opened up opportunities for those in the field looking for jobs. So that, you know, you now have an opportunity to work for companies and organizations you never had a chance to work for in the past. And really that's worldwide. So it's not just here in the States, it's around the world. But within the open source space, so many jobs are available. And, you know, uh, uh, open source skills are something that I think a lot of people kind of overlook and maybe even take for granted. But I can tell you that employers are looking for them and they enable people to jump off the page. When you have open source skills on your resume, you literally jump off the page and you will move to the front of the line. We hear that over and over and over again from hiring managers, really not just here in the States, but around the world. So that's especially applicable to maybe newer people in the field, early stage technologists that are just looking to, you know, gain a footing, get, get, you know, a footing uh, in the marketplace, uh, you know, in the job field and also for students. I mean, a lot of people coming out of code schools and colleges and things like that, it's that age old conundrum, right? How do I get a job without experience and experience without a job? Well, I can right. tell you open source is a great way to do that. Join an open source project, begin to contribute, develop relationships, form relationships with maintainers or people that are also contributing to the project. And it's amazing the number of jobs that can be, um, you know, stumbled upon and gotten and obtained via that very process. And two, Phil, I'll say this, I mean, you know, we get emails and text messages and just personal messages all the time from people that have attended our events that have done exactly what you described. They've bumped into someone, they started a conversation and that led to a job. We hear that all the time. And now, you know, what's really fun is we've now been around long enough. You know, some of the people that got jobs a decade ago are now thought leaders. They're book authors. They are, right. they are, they are the thought leaders in the field that initially got their start with us all those years ago. So that's really kind of cool. Yeah, I just think there's so many opportunities in the space. So we're just going to guess that this crowd, there's folks that are going to want to go, whether they're going to go online or whether they're going to go in person. We've already dropped into the chat the special Tech After Five discount tickets that uh, waive the fees for the early bird tickets. And you can see that when you jump in. So the link is there. It's ta5.us slash ATO, all things open 2021. So just click on that link inside there. And of course you can, uh, you know, go ahead and grab your tickets and get them as a discount via us. If you have questions for Todd about the event, how about sticking them inside the chat? And uh, Dan Lau has already stuck one in there. And he said, will the legal aspects of open source be a topic that's covered at these events, at this event? Yeah. You know, legal and compliance is something, again, that's overlooked. So um, that is a topic that we cover. Um, you know, licensing, just as an example, is a really big deal. I mean, how many people within, um, you know, a technology environment pull code down, maybe from GitHub, because it enables you to get to where you need to go faster, but they never really notice the license that might be attached to that, you know, and, and one, maybe they don't even look for it, but two, even if they do look for it, well, what does it mean? What does it mean in Apple, you know, when it's applied, et cetera, do they consult legal? Does the company or organization have a governance policy that dictates how you as an employee of an organization can utilize open source code or whatever you might be using? And I can tell you that most companies don't have a governance policy and most, uh, you know, technologists, uh, some do, but a lot don't look at the uh, license because the license will dictate really how you can use it how it's to be used, what the intent of the usage right. is, et cetera. So those are just, you know, licensing is just one example. So long answer to a short question, but the short answer is yes, absolutely. We think that's extremely important and something that is often overlooked. And when we feature sessions on those topics, we think we're delivering a lot of value to the community because there are a lot of people out there looking for those answers and maybe don't even know where to go. I get so many questions. Hey, we have a, I have a licensing question. What attorneys specialize in open source licensing? I don't even know of one. So we're then able to make the connection because we've hosted attorneys or other open source licensing specialists at our events and we can connect the dots. Yeah, excellent. Adam Wycliffe has got a question as well. And he says, I'm not a programmer, but I am a software project manager. Um, will this be a good event for me too? I mean, what, what is someone who's like that going to get out of this? Well, yeah. So again, short answer is yes, absolutely. 
you know, one, I think as the manager, you still need, it's even more important for you to really kind of know what's going on and to know what maybe, you know, the baseline technologists are working with, or, you know, I promise you that technologists in your organization are probably using open source in some way, shape or form, whether you realize it or not. Uh, and we see that all the time. We see high level managers that maybe, you know, manage people, right? That's their primary responsibility, but don't embed themselves in the weeds of the day to day, really down in the weeds of the tech. I'm not saying that that's the case here at all. That's probably not the case, but in many cases, it is the case. And in many cases, those managers don't even know what their baseline tech people are actually doing, what code they might be pulling down. Um, you know, people front, I'll, I'll just say frontline, they're given a task, they're given a budget, they're given a time frame. And then in a lot of cases, it's left to them to figure out, well, how are you going to implement what I've asked you to implement? And a lot of people default to open source because a lot of the work is already done. It's out there. It's available. They'll grab it, pull it down, implement it into a code base, implement it into an infrastructure. Never have, you know, again, going back to the prior comment, right? The prior topic, never you know, really taken a look at it, et cetera. So anyway, but, you know, it's now more important than ever for managers to know what's going on. And I can tell you that technologists are using it. And if they're not using it, they've considered using it or would like to use it. Um, so again, we have sessions specifically for managers. Um, you know, uh, you can save money, everything from budget issues to licensing issues to, again, just what's hot, what's trending. Uh, you might hear from some of the people that you manage, hey, you know, uh, Mr. Manager, Miss Manager, I'd like to use this. Well, it would help if you have heard of that before and can engage in a conversation if you're at least have a baseline level of knowledge about what, you know, your associate with what your colleague is suggesting. If your answer right. is, I don't even know what you're talking. I've never even heard of this. What, what are you talking about? You know, that, that would require a little more time to get up to speed, et cetera. But if you already know, if you're like, you know what, I attended ATO, I actually dropped in on a session on that topic. Let's engage in a conversation. Let's take a serious look at it. But you'd never be able to do that without the baseline understanding. I'm not saying you can attend the event and become an expert. There, there, there's a lot out there, but you can gain right. a baseline understanding that would enable you maybe to be, be a better manager. Yeah, no, I love that. I'm going to tell you, I think that one of the things is you don't know, you don't know that you don't know what questions you ought to be asking, right? That's and right. that is what the whole point of bumping into these people, you know, whether again, whether it's online or live or whatever, but sort of having these these beneficial random interactions like oh my god that guy i mean i'm gonna tell you todd in these i feel like so, so much of the value is in the q and a's near the ends of the sessions kind of thing because someone else asks a question you're like i didn't know i needed to know that it's like oh that was super important but there was someone over there struggling and they just could form the question so i think that's super useful all right i got one more question here david MacArthur says most many of my clients in the uh, tech space ask how, if I can help them connect them to better positions. Where can we as advocates send them or advise them? And I guess that means to connect with you guys. I think mm -hmm. I know the answer. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna just start, I'm gonna give the softball part of Todd's answer. Buy a ticket, grab your ticket to the event and get involved in all of this. But Todd, go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, making connections for clients is a huge value add. So um, that link is actually for a free in-person pass. So the discounts automatically apply, you can just click. So if you have clients that might want to attend in-person or virtually, that link, uh, they can click the link and register either for in-person or virtual. If they choose in-person, the discount is automatically applied. They can attend in Raleigh for free. So while a lot of people don't feel comfortable attending on site, right, within with other people that maybe they don't know, um, a lot of people do. We just hosted a meetup last week on Wednesday. I was shocked by the turnout. A lot of people are ready to get back in person. Uh, we do proof of vaccination, proof of negative test, indoor face mask, uh, temperature check. So there are a lot of safety precautions in place. And with those precautions, I think it made a lot of people feel comfortable. So to the point directly, they can attend in person or virtually and just letting them know about the event where they can make connections and gain that education and better understanding is a massive value add. So you're right, Phil, that's, that's the softball aspect of this. Um, I would encourage them to attend the event. And, you know, even over and above that, even beyond that, if you have clients that need connections in a particular area, re reach out to me directly. 
I mean, if, you know, maybe, you, you know, they ask you for a connection or ask you about a topic that you're not familiar with, or maybe just don't know anyone or, you know, an expert in the field, don't hesitate to ping me, uh, you know, re reach out to us directly. A lot of what we do, and certainly a lot of what I do on a daily basis is I make connections. A lot of people have those questions. They don't know where else to go. And we're more than happy to help you out. But I do think, you know, sometimes you may not know, but you know, somebody that does know. And even having the secondary, knowing the people that do know, it is providing every bit as much value as if you had known yourself. That's just a personal opinion, but I strongly believe that. Yeah. No, thank you for that, Todd. And I'm going to tell you, it's, um, this is my jam is to get these people connected. It's why you're here is to get these people connected, right? We're, in the, we're trying to help the same group of people go and find the folks they need to know or the ones that didn't even know they need to know. Yeah. So if you're comfortable getting together with a group of folks, no one's going to do it any safer than Todd Lewis at All Things Open, and he's buying your ticket. All you got to do is click on the button, show up. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, that, they got a plan for that too, and you can show up online. So, I mean, you're going to get covered either way. Um, I, I'm delighted you're here. I'm delighted that you're doing this. I am looking forward to the event this year, and I'm going to guess that there are some folks out there that need you and need this space and can move their career along by hanging around with some of the other folks that are in this. So, uh, hey, well, uh, thank you, Todd, for hanging out with us. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. And um, and if you'll hang around for a few minutes, maybe there'll be some other questions folks might I'd have here to. as we've got at the end. But um, I want to make sure that we all give uh, Todd the uh, high 10 treatment <laughs> right here because high five is not good enough. Um, <laughs> we're a high 10 crowd. We're going to give him each hand and say welcome. That's thank awesome. you for being here. Yeah.